Today, we'll be learning this really simple gyroscopic loop animation. It could be a gimbal or a gyroscope, but essentially, you'll learn techniques that you can use in any type of animation. So let's start off building this. In our default scene, we're going to press X to delete the default cube. Then we'll press Shift A, curve, and search for the normal circle. Now, the useful point of using a curve is that we can control the resolution whenever we want. So I'm going to increase the resolution to 128 and then we can give it any type of bevel and thickness that we want. So under the geometry section, I'm going to go ahead and go to the bevel and increase the depth to something like 0.05 just to make it nice and round. However, I also want this to be expanded on the Z axis. And to do that, all I have to do is increase the extrude to maybe something like 0.5 and that becomes extruded on the Z by quite a bit. Now that's way too much, so I'll make it 0.05 to get the type of extrusion that I was originally looking for. Apart from that, I also feel like we can increase the resolution of the bevel to just make it a little smoother for, during our final render. So I'll just increase it all the way to 32, which is the max that Blender allows. After that, I can press Shift D to create a duplicate and just scale it by 1.2 units to create the second version. However, if you don't want it to actually get fatter, all you have to do is just decrease the depth till it becomes approximately the same thickness as the first one. Once you have that, again, press Shift D S 1.2 to create your third version. And again, just change the depth till it becomes approximately the same size as the previous ones. Once you have all three of them set, you can rotate the other two on their respective axes. So I'll take the first one, rotate it on the x-axis by 90 degrees. I'll keep the second one as is, and I'll rotate the third one on the y-axis by 90 degrees so that we get an inner ring, middle ring, and an outer ring. Then we need some sort of object in the middle. So we'll press Shift A and just add in a simple icosphere and press Control 5 to add in a subdivision surface of level five. Go to object and click shade smooth. But remember when you use Control 5 shortcut, you have to go to the modifier properties and actually increase the render to five as well. Otherwise the render will be at a lower resolution. Once you're done with that, you can scale it by tapping X and just bringing it down to maybe 0.5. And this is your setup. Once you're done with this, you can set all of your animation defaults before you start the animation. So we'll go to the output properties, change the frame rate to 30 frames per second and change the end frame to 150 so that it's a five second long animation. Along with that, you can choose whatever output folder you want and you can change the file format to FFmpeg video, but you have to change the encoding container from Matroska to MPEG4 and an output quality of perceptually lossless. Then you can expand the timeline by clicking and dragging to bring this up and go back to frame zero and then select all three of these rings by pressing shift to select multiple objects and then press I rotation. And then you can go to frame 150, take the outermost ring, rotate it on the Z axis by 360 degrees and press I rotation. Then select the middle ring, rotate it about the X axis by 360 degrees, press I rotation. And then you can select the last ring and rotate it about the Y axis by 360 degrees and then press I rotation. Then again, select all three of the objects Go down here, press A to make sure that all the keyframes are selected, press T, linear, and that way you'll get a perfectly seamless looping animation. Now the thing is that we have to place our camera. So we can select our camera, press Alt G to clear location, Alt R to clear rotation, rotate it on the X axis by 90 degrees, and then grab it on the Y axis just till it comes out of the objects, and then press zero to enter the camera view. After that, you can go to the object data properties and reduce the focal length of the camera down to something like 25, and then grab it on the Y axis and just bring it in till everything fits in to your liking. And once you're happy with that, also go to viewport display, passport out, or increase it all the way to one. Now, if you keep it just like this, the problem that I feel is that this particular ring is going to just look like a single line that keeps rotating and you can't actually tell that it's a ring as well. So to fix that, I'm going to press shift A and add in an empty plane axis and just scale that up a little bit. Then take my camera, shift select the empty and press control P set parent to object and then take this empty, rotate it on the Z axis by something like 10 degrees and make sure when you're doing this rotation, you select only the empty and not your camera and the empty. And once you've done that, select your camera, press alt P to clear the parent, but make sure you click clear parent and keep transformation. Then you can take the empty and press X delete. And that way you just have a better position for the camera in my opinion. After that, you can start off with the actual texturing and the background. So we'll press shift A and just add in a mesh plane, rotate it on the X axis by 90 degrees, rotate it on the Z axis by 10 degrees, which is the same amount that we rotated the empty by, and then scale it up 
till it goes outside our camera view and you have to move it back but if you want it to go back with respect to the view you can change the transform from global to local or change it to view and then you can just grab it on the z to move it back so we have to make sure that none of the rings are going to interact with it so just push it back quite far and then scale it up till it covers the entire camera view and make sure you change the transform orientations back to global. So then just play the animation to make sure that there is no clipping happening even at the absolute edge. So once you have that, we can set all of our render defaults. So go to the render properties, switch on ambient occlusion and underneath here, just increase the distance to something like one meter, switch on bloom, screen space reflections as well, and then go to your viewport shading of render to see what we have. Select the light, press alt G to clear its location. And right now, because it goes within the sphere, you can't actually see the effects of the light, but you'll be able to see it as soon as we add in the material for this sphere. So we'll leave it as is for now. And then we'll go to the world properties and change the color all the way to a bright white and maybe give it a hue of 0.33 so that it's greenish and just increase the saturation by a little bit, maybe 0.6 and that will make everything greenish. Then to actually be able to see everything, you have to start giving the materials. So we'll select the icosphere in the center, go to the material properties, add in a new material slot, and then just increase the metallicness, maybe up to 0.9 and just reduce the roughness to maybe 0.2 and change the base color to this nice lemon green color, which is a hue of 0.297. And I'm gonna increase the saturation all the way to one. Then I'm gonna select any one of the rings, add in a new material. Again, I can name it rings. And for the base color, I'm just gonna bring it down quite a bit, but I'm gonna increase the metallicness again, maybe to 0.8 and I'm going to bring the roughness down to 0.2. And then to make more details visible on this particular ring, I'm going to change this window from the timeline to the shader editor. And I'm just going to zoom in and I'll press Shift A to search for a bump node. And I'll press Shift A to search for a noise texture. And then I'm going to plug the color into the height, decrease the strength to 0.1 and plug this into the normal. So now I can't really see anything. So I'm going to go ahead and start increasing the scale and maybe a scale of 10 will look all right, but I'm going to increase the detail to seven. And that just gives it this really nice texture that I like. And once you have that, you can select the other two rings and finally select the ring that you gave the material to, and then press control L link materials. So that way all of them get the same materials. Next up the background, you can just select the background plane, press new to add in a new material, label it as background. Now labeling just helps out because all of these materials and blend files are going to be available on Patreon as well. So in case you want to play around with it yourself, you can head on over to my Patreon and you'll get access to all of the animations, wallpapers, and the blend files based on what tier suits you. So if you're interested, do check that out. Link will be in the description. After that, for the background plane, we can start off by reducing the base color to a complete black and just pressing Shift A and searching for a bump node. And this one we can control with maybe a Voronoi texture. So let's search for a Voronoi texture and plug the distance into the height. However, I want some control. So I'm going to press Shift A and search for a color ramp and just plug that in over here. Now I can take the normal and plug it into the normal, but a few things have to be changed. First off, we have to increase the scale quite a bit. And I also feel like the bump is acting in the reverse of what I want. So I'm just going to click on invert to invert it. And then I'm going to take this white slider and change the color to a much darker gray so that there's much lower contrast. So I'll go down to a value of 0 0.04. And then I'll also decrease the strength to maybe 0 0.5. And I'll also decheck invert. So that just gives a little bit of texture to the background. However, we can add in quite a bit more by switching from object to world and then pressing shift A and searching for a volume scatter node and plugging that into the volume. Now the density is way too high. So I'm going to decrease the density to 0.01 and I'm going to increase the color all the way to white. After which I'm going to go to the sphere in the center, go down to the settings and under the shadow mode, I'm going to change it from opaque to none. And immediately the light is allowed to go out of the sphere as well. So evidently it's way too bright. So I'm going to select the light change the color to make it a nice lemon green color. And I'm going to reduce the volume strength to 0.1. And I'm going to change the shadow mode for the rings as well to none. So go select the rings, go all the way down and change the shadow mode to none. Then you can switch off overlays by toggling this button and you can see what you currently have. Now to see the actual speed of animation, you can change back to the timeline 
and under the playback, change it from play every frame to frame dropping. And that way you see the actual speed at which it's being animated. So after that, all that's left to do with is play around with the actual volume settings by either increasing the density or playing around with the background plane and things like that, such as increasing the metallicness of the background all the way to one and maybe keeping the roughness at 0.3. And I think that's about it for the tutorial. I might make a few minor changes before rendering out the animation and that's the version that will be available on Patreon. So with those changes, this is the final animation. I hope you learned something from this particular tutorial and I would love to see how you apply this in various creative situations that you may encounter. So definitely comment your questions down below and until the next video comes out that's going to be tomorrow, don't forget to keep creating and stay creative.